Broly's back, back again. And the newest trailer gave us a definitive look into the most controversial Dragon Ball character of all time. A character where love and hate emanates from Dragon Ball fans all throughout the globe. But regardless of your hate or love towards Broly, you can watch this video. Because what if someone told you that Paragus is more important than Broly himself in all of the Broly films? So much so to the point that one of the key reasons that we should look forward to the new Broly film is not because of Broly, but because of his father Paragus. And let's explain why this is. So let's start off by asking ourselves a question. Without watching the 2018 Dragon Ball Super Broly movie, what will be the plot? Now, hold on to that thought that you have as we break this down into two parts. Excluding spoilers and leaks and without seeing the movie, we can be 99% sure what Broly's role will be in the film. He will be the muscle of the movie that gets a new form and will fight against Goku and friends. You see, initially in the first Broly movie, which is universally recognized as the best Broly film, Paragus was actually the main villain of the movie. Now, yes, Broly was the tool that Paragus used to fight against everybody and is more iconic to Dragon Ball fans, but the entire plot and decisions of all characters stems directly from Paragus. As Black and Fist has pointed out, the duo of Broly and Paragus is akin to that of Frankenstein and Frankenstein's monster. One is the muscle, the other is the brain. If it weren't for Paragus, Broly would just be a floating baby in outer space that would have eventually have died of natural causes due to the lack of nutrition, unless we try to answer the biggest question in Saiyan history as to how Saiyan babies managed to survive on remote planets by themselves, but that's another topic for another day. In addition, if you psychoanalyze both Broly and Kale, it appears that their mental conditioning is the primary reason for their aggression in their legendary Super Saiyan states. Broly didn't choose to hate Goku for a dumb reason. His innate Saiyan power had a mental effect on him as we see from the time that he was a child. And the same also goes for Kale. We see in Dragon Ball Super that Kale isn't evil, but she acts savagely whenever she turns into that vicious transformation. Their forms give them villain-like powers, and in the case of Paragus and Broly, Paragus uses that villain-like power as a tool for his own will. And to understand this further, if we go back to the first film, it is a perfectly self-contained movie. Paragus has a plot to exact revenge on Vegeta and his son for what his father did to him and Broly, Paragus is killed by his own son, and Broly is killed by Goku with the help of his friends. And from that, if Broly actually died, the story would have completely fulfilled its purpose with no need of an additional movie. But as we all know with marketing, money forces a lot of decisions to be made, and surprisingly, when we take a look at the other two Broly films without Paragus, the value of Paragus's character is even more prevalent in the movies where Paragus wasn't even in. Want to know how? Well, let's go on to Broly's second coming. First of all, Broly manages to survive the brink of death from his battle with Goku and somehow travels all the way to Earth in the vast universe, crashes and stays frozen for years. Now tell yourself if that isn't an extremely forced way to explain how Broly survived having his insides ripped open on a planet that was about to collide with a comet while also explaining how he would find a spaceship and somehow get that spaceship to planet Earth. But that's not really the issue we have at hand here, guys. The issue we have at hand is what is Broly's huge motive for fighting Goten and Gohan in the film? Yes, you said it, my friends. It's because they both resemble and are related to the guy who made him cry as a baby. And although Vegeta was the stronger plot in the first movie, in Broly's second coming, Vegeta is nowhere to be found. So to sum up Broly's second coming, they stripped the first film's primary plot of Paragus wanting to exact revenge on Vegeta, which was a much more plot-driven motive, and used the second plot of Broly hating on Goku because he cried to drive the entire movie with an extremely weak reason to even explain how Broly survived. And yes guys, we know that Broly has always been a limited character on his own, but at least in the first movie, when Broly transforms into the legendary Super Saiyan, we see moments of him having some level of cerebral humor where he was being sarcastic to the characters that he was fighting against. It's finished already? <gasps> so it's true. You are all talking no action. A true piece of trash.
and although that's an extremely limited way to have a character in Broly, the second film didn't have any of that as he was essentially transformed into a rage monster with no substance. And whatever small personality Broly had was completely wiped away. All of the sarcastic comments that were made in the first film were nowhere to be found, and that's personally what my friend Jax Blade loves so much about the first Broly movie. I do this all the time in comments land where we just quote Broly quotes because that movie was just so inspired. It's like, where do you think you're going, Dad? In a rocket for one person? <laughs> you know, shit like that. Like, cringy, whatever, fun. And when we move on to the third film, Bio Broly, we would honestly just be repeating a lot of the same points that we already discussed for Broly's second coming, as Bio Broly is just a genetic sequel to the other Broly films, similar to Mecha Frieza and Metal Cooler. However, if there was one thing to mention about Bio Broly, it would be the plot trigger. An angry shaman gave a rich man and a scientist dried blood from Broly, and they used that blood to remake him and cause havoc. If you thought Broly's second coming was milking Broly, then Bio Broly was milking the milk from Broly's second coming. And I think we should look at Bio Broly as the peak of how marketing hungry Toei actually was to use this character. But as we fast forward back into present day, the question now comes back to the 2018 Dragon Ball Super movie. First off, we can all probably agree that this redone appearance of an older looking Paragus seems to be an improvement in design. Based off of the timing of Dragon Ball Super, realistically Paragus would be an older Saiyan, but it does make us question how old he actually is, as we know throughout Saiyan history that Saiyans stay in their physical prime for a long time, which means that Paragus would be a really old Saiyan for him to have aged the way he actually did. And appearance aside, with so many major characters being involved in one film, it is virtually impossible for Broly to be a standalone character to connect all of the dots. And specifically to Vegeta and Frieza, what I think makes Paragus' character extremely important for this film, similar to the first film, would be the fact that since Broly was a baby at the time of Frieza and the Saiyans working together, Broly would have never even have really understood who King Vegeta was, along with Frieza without Paragus giving him a history of those characters, and because of Paragus's more cerebral plot to try and exact revenge, Paragus would be the driving plot between everybody. And although there's a 90% chance that Paragus will probably die throughout the film, it doesn't matter because his purpose will and always will be the character that made Broly what he is. Keep in mind that this was a guy that found a planet, enslaved aliens and scientists all to conduct this major plan of revenge. And this was an agenda that took years to plan and put together. And for the 2018 Dragon Ball Super movie, one thing I'm sure that we can be completely certain about is that whatever plan Paragus has up his sleeve has been brewing for decades. The 2018 movie Paragus would have had much more time to think of a devious plan as compared to the first film's Paragus who appeared around the time of the android arc. So you really have to put in consideration what this guy has been thinking of for this much time. And with the implication that Bardock might also have a small appearance in this film as well, that would also give even further reason to explain that Paragus would be the only possible person that would have even have remembered who Bardock was other than Vegeta and King Vegeta. And if there was a final point that we should make about the Saiyan duo, it would be video games. Other than Dragon Ball Heroes and a few talking cameos in a video game such as Super Sonic Warriors 2, Paragus seems to have never have been a playable character in a Dragon Ball video game, and if there was a video game that Paragus was actually playable as, say so in the comment section below because it makes this Paragus argument more valid. But the point that we should get out about Paragus in these very few video games that he appeared in is that the designers understood the value of his character so much to the point that in a video game where the plot was watered down, they understood that Paragus was necessary to presenting Broly to the characters at hand, and that's why Paragus is even valuable to Dragon Ball video games where he doesn't even fight. So overall guys, from the original Broly trilogy to the upcoming Dragon Ball Super movie, 
and even a few video games, the value of Paragus has been well documented. It's understandable that Paragus can be forgotten as we have never really seen him fight, along with even knowing how strong he actually is, but it doesn't really matter, because weak or strong, Paragus has and will always be the most important character to all of the Broly films, even over his own son Broly himself. And if you want to hear more Broly talk, check out these three fact videos on 15 facts you should know about Broly, in addition to checking out these other two videos on Frieza and Bardock, as all characters have lore and will be somewhat involved in the upcoming Broly movie. And until then, stay cool and stay safe my friends.